Alright guys, welcome back to another Stay Frosty mini pod, Stay Frosty Gaming mini pod. Uh, obviously my gaming, my channel is mainly gaming where I just post clips and, and videos, stuff like that. But uh, I do think it's pretty cool to talk about what's in the now in my gaming world. Obviously I'm, I'm not talking about the whole gaming world because it's so big and I'm, I'm not into everything. Like, you know, I could be talking about Warzone, but I'm just not simply into Warzone, stuff like that. So... I'm just talking about the things that really I'm into, and if you're into it as well, feel free to chime along. Uh, last, This is a technically episode one. Um, last week we did a test run where I named it episode zero, where I talked about Fortnite's new season Wrecked. And so if you're into Fortnite and you want to talk about things like that, discuss with me things like that, go back to um, last week's episode, episode zero, Fortnite chapter Wrecked. And this week, so our episode one, we're talking about something that actually happened about two weeks ago. It's not too new, but I barely got this pod out, so it's something that I want to talk about. And it's called the Hogwarts Legacy June 2024 update. So for those of you that don't know, Hogwarts Legacy is a game in the Harry Potter franchise, the Harry Potter world. It is set uh, way before Harry Potter's time. Um, I'm not exact... The, I, I don't know the exact dates, but I just noticed before Harry Potter's, Harry Potter's time, and you are a character that knows ancient magic, the game dropped in February of 2023, and it's been an long-awaited update for anything to happen with the game. Um, so we're going to talk about their, their June update, a little, a little about that. Um, and another little side note, well, we will be mentioning um, the new... Harry Potter Quidditch Champions game that's going to come out in September and our thoughts on that. So we'll get into a couple of things from cosmetics to flying editions to new potions to new quests to a photo mode to this new game and what we think about it, what they should add. And we'll, we'll get into it again. Remember, this is simply just my opinion. It is not factual. This is nothing. I, all, of, all of my opinions aren't factual. It's nothing solid in stone it's just something that how i think and how i think all this should operate so if you know there's really no reason to be offended by it if you just disagree with certain things you know you don't have to be uh so mad about it just like i said it's just simply my opinion it's nothing serious and you know if you want to chime in and agree or disagree Go ahead in the comment section. I'm completely cool with that, but let's keep it civil. Let's not get too carried away. Remember, like I said, nothing I say is, is set in stone on my opinion. It's just what I think, and it's nothing too, too crazy or anything like that. It's just what I'm expressing, and I'm willing to always listen to your guys' debates, listen to your guys' ideas. So go ahead and hit that comment section if you agree or disagree with anything, and, and let me know what you think on whatever subject we're talking about. So, like I said, let's get into it. Hogwarts Legacy June 2024 update. Um, the game went through an update on June 6th, I believe, 2024 update. It was the summer update that they are going through. And for those of you that have played Hogwarts Legacy and have been involved in the whole game, you know that this is a long time for one update to kind of get what we got. So the game released in 2023 February. Uh, it was a good time to release it. I think it was on Valentine's Day or, or just around that day. And they hadn't added anything in the game for a good minute. It was February 2023. They kind of fixed some bugs and some glitches and stuff like that. And it basically went a whole year and what? Like year four or five months before they actually put out another update and it wasn't even really all that amazing it was a good update but it wasn't anything too big so i think it was a really long time from drop date to new update and the thing about these campaign games is that it's hard to keep players playing them because once you finish the campaign that's it there's nothing else you know um games like like jedi survivor that came out in march 2023 or like you know uh, hogwarts legacy you kind of just roll through the campaign and once you're done with the campaign you can kind of do the side missions but if if you're not really too into doing the side missions and 100 percent of the game you just kind of want content uh, you know that this game kind of took a while for anything else to happen it released its campaign and i remember finishing the campaign within a week or two and then within like the month i was finally done with getting all the the collections the chests the the beasts the 
side missions and there was nothing really else to do you know there was really no point in continuing playing every now and then when I felt like playing because I, I really do like the Harry Potter world and I thought the game was really good I would hop back on and but there's nothing else to do like I said you kind of just you can go to the battle arenas but I mean it's the same process over and over again uh, you could fight you know enemies on on like you know the the map that are just kind of like walking around and stuff but I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. Once you kind of become overpowered, you can really defeat anybody in like one hit. Especially if you know the killing curse, which which I do as well. I know you're given a choice to learn it or not. So, a year and four or five months go by from February 2023 to June 2024, where they finally gave us another update. And the update was, like I said, the summer 2024 update. Where they added a couple cosmetics, some flying additions, a new potion, and a new quest with the photo mode. So let's get into the cosmetics. With the cosmetics, uh, which you can also find on my stories, if you go to, oh, I'm sorry, my reels. If you go to my YouTube reels, there is a uh, reel where I go over everything that they added in Hogwarts Legacy. So if you want to go check that out to see what these things look like, go for it. If not, don't worry about it. So. The cosmetics they added uh, was the glasses. They added these glasses, which are called the glasses who lived. And essentially, it's just Harry Potter's glasses with the tape uh, on the middle holding them together. So it's supposed to be like a nice little gesture towards you know Harry, the Harry Potter world. And it's his little round spectacles with, with tape in the middle. And it's the glasses who lived, right? They're broken, but you fix them. And it's a play on Harry Potter's name, where Harry Potter's the boy who lived, right? He survived Voldemort's attack when he was young to the glasses who lived. Um, next, they added Azkaban uh, cosmetics. So you can get the Azkaban uniform, which is, if you've seen Harry Potter, or played, I think, in Hufflepuff's house. <laughs> um, and there's a mission where you go to Azkaban, and they wear, it's a prison uniform in the Harry Potter world. Azkaban is a prison. And they wear like this kind of like striped pajamas type outfit, um, horizontally striped white and black pajamas outfit. Nothing too special. It's just what they wear. And you can also get the Azkaban prison coat, which is uh, this kind of like raggedy um, coat that it's like an overcoat that you can wear. And that's just uh, what they added. For, for coats. Um, you can also get shopkeeper outfit and I'll get into that a little bit later but it's basically just uh, an outfit you can wear to when you go to Hogsmeade and all the shopkeepers are there they have their nice uniforms stuff like that it's basically the same thing they give you your own outfit too but there's a way to get that that it's a little bit different so I'll get into that a little bit later but like I said the glasses who live that's what they added Azkaban coat and Azkaban uniform that's it. Uh, they've also added as far as cosmetics, they also added flying additions to the game, so you can now uh, equip the Lavender Borealis Broom, which is a broom that, you know, when you fly through the air with it, um, it has this kind of like lavender purple uh, trail to it that shoots out of the back of it. And that's pretty much all it is. It's nothing special. There's no enhancements to it or anything. It's just a new broom that when you fly, it, it has like a trail behind it that's like purple and like sparkly kind of deal. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can also order, I'm sorry, you can also equip the Onyx Hippogriff mount. So if any of you guys are really into Harry Potter and you pre-ordered the game before it came out, you know that it gave you special cosmetics. Now, the cosmetics it gave you was like a Death Eater costume, and it gave you this uh, hippogriff that was onyx colored. It was it was like a, a dark hippogriff, uh, had like black feathers. So, you know, uh, Buckbeak and, and the hippogriff high wing in the game, they have uh, like white feathers. This one is an onyx, dark black colored um, hippogriff that if you pre-order the game, they gave it to you. Um, and I don't like that they added this in the update because it kind of takes that, you know, people paid a lot of extra money for this um, special hippogriff named Calico. 
or Caligo, I don't really remember, but people paid extra money for it, and um, now it's just available to everybody. All you have to do is just update your game. So I feel like that's a little bit of a um, an issue with me. I feel like it defeats the purpose of paying this money just so you can have it a little bit sooner. It, it, it makes it seem like at that point it's not worth it. In a year, four months, I'll have this hippogriff you know you don't even really use the hippogriffs too much anyways but i feel like it kind of take they shouldn't have added this for sure i, sh I feel like they should have just kept this to people that pre-order the game because the onyx hippogriff is really cool like i said he's got dark colored feathers and, and like light blue eyes and it's something unique that people will know like oh he's got the onyx hippogriff or in the or the death Eater outfit um clearly he pre-ordered the game and he paid extra money for it now it kind of takes a little bit of that value away from caligo and i feel like they shouldn't have added this but if you the new update if you haven't had it already you can also have the lavender borealis broom and the onyx hippogriff mount now they also added a new potion in the game so as you if you've played harry potter i never really used the potions i should have but i didn't um there's a bunch of potions in the game from uh, an invisibility potion to uh, you can have like solid rock skin to take less damage. There's a potion where you can do deal more damage or another potion that kind of uh, has like lightning around you to, to help protect you. So they add a new one called Felix Felicis, which is a.k.a. Liquid Luck. Liquid Luck is in Harry Potter. I don't know if you, if you guys haven't watched Harry Potter or read the books. It's a it's a potion in Harry Potter that they make in the sixth book or movie called Half-Blood Prince. And basically, Felix Felicis, a.k.a. Liquid Luck, is a potion that is supposed to bring you luck. Um, in the movie, uh, Harry Potter needs answers. He doesn't know how to find them. He can't get them, so he takes this Liquid Luck, and it just kind of guides him to where... Like, he just feels so good about certain things that he... he it, it basically guides him to where he thinks he should be because he just has a good feeling about it and then he gets the answers there that's what it, the basis around it's supposed to be um it kind of just you know gives you good feelings about certain things like if you need answers to something or if you need this if you need that he tricks ron in the in the movie ron uh is trying out for a goalie and he ma uh, for his quidditch team uh, he makes goalie and he's scared about his first game and they pretend to give him liquid luck and he has like a really good game right so if he took liquid luck ron's feelings would be like he just has a good feeling about goaltending and he would kind of know what to do and 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 make better decisions that's what liquid luck is in in like the movie uh i books i can't tell you i've never read the books sorry book readers out there just can't do it so felix felicis aka liquid luck in the game is a little bit different so, um, there's a bunch of chests hidden around Hogwarts, literally everywhere. Like, hidden in, in the castle, in, in, in the fields, in Hogsmeade, in, in houses in Hogsmeade, in tunnels, in caves. It's, they're everywhere. There's a ton of them. And if you don't really have, like, a guide to where they are, chances are you didn't stumble across all of them. Um, so what Felix Felicis does, if you take, if you make the potion, which is pretty easy to make, you can brew it yourself. You could probably buy it at uh, the potion place in Hogsmeade, but uh, you can also make your own potions in in your room requirement. And this one's pretty easy to make. There's nothing special about it. So once you have all the ingredients, you can make the potion. And essentially, what uh, it does in the game is when you take Felix Felicis, it will mark chests. I think on your on your map or like on your mini map or in in game and you'll be able to see them a lot better I think they're marked in gold and then you can go and find them so it just gives you luck in finding chests it's pretty I would say it's pretty solid to do when you're doing like missions and stuff because there's always chests everywhere and some people kind of didn't like the fact that you're always kind of walking like every now and then doing revelio which reveals stuff around you this way you could just take it You'll see collectibles around you, and then you could just grab them. And I think it's active for a couple minutes. I think up to five. So um, that's all. That's all the new potion Felix Felicis is. Now, before I get into the main chunk of uh, the the update, they also added a photo mode, which is pretty pretty cool. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy has a ton. Of really neat 
um, imagery and like background and and all that. So oftentimes when I find myself playing the game, I see like a cool like uh, background image or something of like a mountain and it's got like snow in the background and the sun is hitting just right and you kind of want to capture that moment so you kind of like position yourself in a way where you can get it and then you take a screenshot and it's like you have the attack buttons your potion buttons your mini map so it doesn't really look all that amazing but they added this photo mode which is pretty cool so if you if you looking at something that you like you can click uh, the start button where it takes you to your field guide and on the bottom right there's an option that says enter photo mode so you click photo mode and it'll basically take a photo of or it'll show you like what you're looking at and where you're at on uh, in the game and it'll let you adjust it in any way you can to capture the scene without like your your potions being there your mini map being there like your whatever your headings there your HUD outlines so when you click on it it uh it gives you a bunch of options so you can pan out you could zoom in you could pan out you can you can move the camera up, move the camera down you can change uh, filters on it to give it like a, a snowy filter to give it a um, like a deathly hollows filter you can tilt the cameras you could put saturation and, and and all that kind of stuff you can really do a lot of different things here you can even add borders around it whatever house you're in you could do Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw borders uh, nice borders, portrait borders um, the uh, Harry Potter like newspaper borders I forget what the uh, name of the newspaper is Daily Profit sorry da Daily Profit border like um uh, potion border like there's a whole bunch of borders in there you can add emblems on it like Hogwarts Legacy and and or like a, a Slytherin emblem I'm in Slytherin you can add a Slytherin emblem you can do all this then finally once you get like the right angle the right saturation the right you know um, adjustments to it you can also change your pose so I know sometimes you just and you just kind of stand there you can change your pose into a couple different ways which is like you could do like an attack pose, multiple attack poses, a taunting pose. You could sit down in three different positions. You can stand in certain ways with your arms crossed. You can change your pose or you can also take away your character in general. Um, you can also take away NPCs around you. If there's an NPC in the picture that you don't want, you can click hide NPCs and it just deletes them from the picture. And then once you finally get all your angles and all your grid for worked and all that, you just kind of click... Um, uh, obviously like to go into the photo mode you hide hide everything you hide all the the menu the drop menu and all that and then once you have the picture you then take the photo I don't think you take the photo in the game I think you take it on your device usually devices have an option to do that um, I know on Xbox you just click uh, your home menu and then you click capture screenshot and it screenshots the game I haven't seen anything on the actual game that says capture photo and has like an album in the game I just think it's to get um, a photo to capture on your device whether it's your PC your place I'm sure PlayStation and PC have an option to the switch I'm sure also has one as well and Xbox like I said we all know Xbox has one so that's the photo mode they added it's pretty neat it's pretty fun I've used it a couple times I've used it for thumbnails on videos stuff like that where you know I have to kind of edit videos and, and blur stuff out now I can kind of just go into a photo mode um, capture what I want and then add whatever I need to later on in, a, in an edit so that's pretty neat uh, definitely check out the photo mode like I said uh, Hogwarts Legacy has a huge and large amount of just like beautiful imagery and display so um, being able to kind of like capture that now and not just like taking a screenshot of like in-game battle or anything but being able to like pause the game capture what it is and then adjust all of it is really really cool now the last thing Hogwarts Legacy added is the Haunted Hogsmeade shop quest so I, if I'm correct I might not be I think some platforms already had this quest when the game dropped If I'm correct, I think PlayStation maybe had it. 
so this isn't new to them. If they didn't have it, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I think some platforms did have it. Anyways, the platforms that didn't have it, uh, they dropped a new quest in Hogsmeade. Um, so if you're a guy like me who beat the campaign, finished all the side missions, everything's blank in the game, there's nothing else to do. There is a new quest in Hogsmeade um, called, I think, Minding Your Business. I think that's what it's called. But everybody calls it the Haunted Hogsmeade Shop Quest. I think the official title is like Minding Your Business or something like that. And um, you essentially talk to an elf, a house elf named Penny. And she tells you that this place is up for sale. You just have to talk to the person that... Uh, selling it, which I think is named Cassandra. You talk to her, and immediately you get this off vibe about her. Something about her is a little off, but she's like, I'll sell it to you for a very low price. All you have to do is just keep customers in it, and then she says that in the back room of the shop, there's a uh, some old stuff from my husband, that my late husband, which obviously means he passed away, that I haven't been able to clear out, and if you could please just go and get them. They're in like a, a trunk and like a chest. So you agree, obviously. You go back to the house elf and the shop where Penny's there, which is the house elf. And she kind of has this off vibe about her saying, oh, it's in the back, all the stuff that you need to get. And for some time she can't talk, like it's like her voice kind of goes out and something, something's definitely wrong. Um, so you go back there, you go to check it out, and when you do, uh, you open the chest where all of Cassandra's late husband's belongings are and you realize the chest kind of goes down there's like a ladder in the chest it's a magical chest so you realize you have to go in here you go in there and you find uh, this door very spooky place and you find the chest and it has like just like a hat in it nothing no, no big deal you turn around to leave and then you realize that the door's gone like there's no door anymore you're just stuck in this creepy basement with like these mannequins set up around everywhere and basically you realize you're in like a haunted chest like you realize you're in like a haunted basement chest thing so you are you now start to hear a voice from a poltergeist his name is fastido i think i believe and he says that you're in like his wonderful game and he can't wait to kind of do all this blah 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 so you have to play his game pretty much. You basically just have to go through this crazy like Doctor Strange poltergeist maze type situation. And all you have to do is just unlock this door. But to get to this door you have to go down a right hallway and a left hallway. When you go down the right hallway you need to find two lanterns down there which are very difficult to do. You either A have to fight a bunch of mannequins that come to life which is kind of spooky. Or B, like the room kind of shifts and it has weird angles to it, so you have to adjust. And once you find both lanterns on the right hallway, you face the poltergeist kind of like he, I think he'll send a bunch of mannequins at you and you have to defeat them. And then he says, okay, like you've, you've beat this part. Now you have to go to the left hallway. You go down the left hallway, save business. You go through these places to find these two lanterns. I open a door that, that leads to Fastido, which is the poltergeist again. And this time, he'll probably send some... He, he's, like, addicted to throwing furniture at you. Like, he'll throw, like, like chairs and, like, tables and stuff. So in this one, he'll just throw a bunch of tables and stuff. Once you dodge all of them, which is fairly easy, he will then say, like, okay, now it's time for, like, the main, like, part of this, you know, challenge. And he'll go away again, so... Once you do that, the uh, this big door unlocks, like, so there's a right and left hallways, right? And before you enter those hallways, you're basically in this big room that has, like, a, a staircase that leads upward to this massive door that's locked. Every time you beat him on the right hallway and the left hallway, it unlocks these two massive locks on the doors. And then you could eventually move forward to... Um, facing the poltergeist so you move forward you realize once you do um it's also important to note that there's a chest before you enter the big door after you completed his little like mazes and such and the chest has five wigan world potions in it so i highly recommend 
uh, getting those Wigan welds and um, just in case just in case um, you have trouble with the boss at least you have health uh, also go in with as many Wigan welds as you possibly can you know it's always good to do in general so definitely buy some at potion stores or uh, pop-up stores that are around Hogwarts whatever or if you make them uh, I think I went in with like 25 just because I don't know why that's how much I can hold so just in case you never know um, so once you finally go through this big door you realize you can't go back and you are in this kind of like graveyard ish area <sighs> sorry if you guys hear me pause sorry I'm drinking coffee so I, I, I apologize about that so you go into a graveyard area you see him there and he's just basically talking about how you need to face Fastido's monster so um, he creates this monster out of furniture so a bunch of chairs tables stuff like that because he could just pick up inanimate objects and throw them at you so aside from the mannequins that he brings to life he creates this monster out of a bunch of like furniture like chairs couches tables lamps whatever and you have to defeat the monster uh, and once you do defeat the monster um, keep in mind he acts like a troll the monster so he'll he he'll kind of like act like he has a club and hit you with the club or he'll throw stuff at you like a troll throw a rock at you in the game same business he'll throw stuff at you you can um, protego yourself which is protect and like you know parry in certain situations he'll also charge at you like he's a troll so just take it like you're fighting a troll uh, in the game now after you fight the the monster and beat him um, even sometimes uh, he even flipped the camera upside down too that it's only temporarily you don't have to fight him completely like that but he just tries to play with you to get in like a way to where like you're gonna lose so once it goes back to normal and you finally beat the monster um, or Fastito's monster he strikes a deal with you and says that um, you know one of the reasons why this store can never hold any customers is because he Fastito would haunt the customers so that you strike a deal with him, say, okay, look, you can only haunt two times a month past like 9 p.m. or whatever. You, you make a deal with this poultry guys, and he agrees. Then he lets you leave his little um, maze mind like control area. And you go back to the place, and then you realize, okay, I got to turn in Cassandra Stone to the authorities because she just tried to get me killed right now and you go to do that with um, one of the police officers that's in the game I forget her, what her name is um, and then Cassandra kinda fights back then you have to fight her once you take her out she has a, a set of moves that are fairly easy to defend if you've played the game um, she there are a couple where she throws stuff at you that you can't uh, protect yourself so you have to dodge and it's all, it's all timed. So once you finally defeat her, um, they take her away to Azkaban. So I guess that's where the Azkaban coat and uniform come in. And then uh, you then get the rights to own the store that she gave you. And Penny the House Elf also serves with you. You free her, much like Dobby in the movies. And she says she just wants to work with you. That's all she wants to do. So you they give you an option between uh, once you finally 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 beat the mission which is a pretty cool mission I think it would have been better if it came out during Halloween it would have been cool if they saved this mission came out with something completely different during the summer and came out with this mission during Halloween but before we get too far into it uh, Penny um, tells you you know she fixed the store up and it's ready to go and all you have to do now is just pick a name so Cassandra goes to Azkaban uh, you beat Fastido and he's locked away in that like basement and now you get to name your own store that's in Hogmeads and you can go to it um, as many times as you want and they give you three names my uh, the name I chose is Vesters and Venom I think they also have uh, like a stone and clad name and then something else and like stitches and something else they only give you three options I can't remember the other two I just picked Vesters and Venom the thing I don't like about this is that there's no in-depth thing about this store essentially all it is is that once you walk into your store you can sell items of clothing for money and it's basically just stuff you find throughout the map that you don't want like let's say you find some spectacles or a scarf or, an, or a gown that you don't want 
you can go to Vesters and Venom, talk to Penny, and you could say, hey, I want to sell this on my store, and then you get money for it being sold. It's nothing special, honestly. Like, you don't get to customize it in your own way. You just name it, that's it. And you just basically can do what you do at any other store. You know, if you go to even the potions place, you can click to sell things, and you could sell him your items that you found throughout the game. It's the same exact thing, um, which I don't really like, but... I guess they didn't really have the capacity to make it more in-depth, and I guess there's really nothing else you would really sell there. But, as far as the quest, I think it's really cool. I think it could have came out in October. Um, you know, more of like a Halloween type update. That would be pretty sweet. But, uh, th that's what we got for the Hogwarts Legacy June 2024 update that came out on June 6th. So, if you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Let me know, um... If you agree or disagree with anything I said, or if there's anything that I missed, uh, go ahead and touch up on it. Um, one thing I will say about this um, update is I think it's it's just too late. It's too late. Um, like I said, the game came out in February 2023, and it took them over a year and three, four, five months to come out with a simple side quest. And the thing about these single player games is that people won't keep playing them if there's no reason to keep playing them. So, if, I mean, we beat the camp, or I beat the campaign, sorry, and the majority of people beat the campaign at least within a month of it being out. Um, I beat it in two weeks. Um, people definitely beat it within a month, two months, latest three. It really wasn't that, that far in depth. And, and, you know, people that don't want to do side quests, just kind of obviously they were going to put the game down. There's no reason to play it. But other people that wanted to explore everything like myself and kind of 100% the game, you beat every side mission, you get every chest, you get every, you know, Merlin trial and, and you know, just whatever else is out there. Then there's nothing else to do. You know, there's no other reason to keep playing. And some of the side quests are very cool, like the Aaron Shire spider quest or... You know, finding Tobbs was... I think that's actually part of the main quest. But the Aaron Shire spider quest, or troll control, well, well, well. And there's a bunch of side quests that are really cool. But they're fairly simple, so once you finish them, that's it. Uh, some of those side quests, like I said, don't even last 10 minutes long. Um, the Aaron Shire one is probably around 10 to 15 minutes. The troll control is literally just like a 2 to 3 minute quest. A well, well, well is like a 2 minute quest. Um... So it was nice to play this um, quest, the Haunted Hogsmeade quest, shop quest. And it definitely took me, I think, over an hour to finish it. It was very in-depth and neat. And I I just wish Hogwarts Legacy did this, like, once every, like, three four months. You know, once a season, come out with something. Maybe, like, a summer update, a fall update, a winter update, a spring update, summer update, fall update, winter update. You know, just constant to get us more into it because there's no pvp there's no multiplayer there's no co-op so once you're done with all of that there's no reason to keep playing it and keep in mind they took out quidditch in the game they scrapped it quidditch was supposed to be involved in the game and and they just couldn't for some reason they they they, they couldn't do it so they scrapped it and they made it a part of the campaign to where they added that it was too dangerous and they had to cancel blah 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 so Quidditch was scrapped, and a lot of people were upset about that because um, the flying is pretty neat in the game. It's pretty smooth in my opinion. You can get the broom upgrades, you get in the broom, you pick a broom, and it does whatever. And the flying is pretty neat, so I can only imagine, which I think the software is by Avalanche, uh, or the creators of the game is by Avalanche, I can only imagine that they would have made a pretty solid um, Quidditch aspect to it but going back like I said I just think you know not adding Quidditch and not having a PvP or a multiplayer at least in Quidditch or something like that um, there's not really too much else to do in the game and I think this update just came a little too late you know an hour I mean a year and four or five months later and it's like people aren't as interested anymore they aren't you know going out of their way to finally you know um, install the game again if anybody uninstalled it or update it um, and I just think they need, like, maybe two or three of these. 
uh, a year, two or three of these updates a year. Doesn't have to be for every season, but maybe make a a summer one and then like maybe like a fall, you know, spooky one. That'd be cool. And maybe like a Christmas update. And the same thing, summer update. You don't need to do one for spring. Leave spring alone. But then, you know, go back again. Summer update, fall spooky update, and then a Christmas update. We all know Harry Potter and Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, they go through the seasons. You see it all the time in Harry Potter with the floating pumpkins and it's Halloween time or, or Christmas and, and there's like trees everywhere. There's snow and they have such beautiful imagery. So I feel like Hogwarts Legacy should have had more updates before this one came out. I think there should have been a lot more quests involved. Just side quests, whether it's a town that needs your help or the haunted Hogsmeade quest. Or maybe like a beast quest where you have to catch like a certain beast or a mythical beast. And because and, we obviously don't have Quidditch in this, so I think they just need to be a little bit better. I think, in my opinion, um, but I think from what I heard is that they already focused on making a second one, so maybe all their resources are going into making a second game, and they don't really have the capacity to come out with these updates. But if that's the case, you know, come out with these um, updates and. Or, or come out with the second game as quick as you can, but also like don't rush it too much or anything. Maybe add Quidditch, that'd be great. But all in all, I think it was a pretty decent update. I liked it, you know, solid seven, eight. You know, if it came out during Halloween, it'd probably be like like a high eight for me, just because it, it's a pretty spooky quest. It's it's got like that spooky feeling to it. It's nothing where you're gonna like jump out and absolutely lose your mind and freak out and have to sleep with the light on. It's just a simple quest. That doesn't really, uh, you know, um, jump scare you. But it's a simple spooky quest. It would have been very cool during Halloween time. But that's a topic for another day, I guess. So that's all the Hogwarts Legacy June 2024 update is. It came out on June 6, 2024. If you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out. Let me know what you think. And if you have checked it out, like I said, let me know what you think. Go in the comment section. Let me know. And, uh, you know... Debate with me, talk to me, give me your updates, give me what you want them to add. Like I said, I want them to add more of these quests a year. Seasonal quests would be really, really cool. Side quests. That's what I want personally. And Quidditch. Everybody wants Quidditch, but maybe they'll add that in Hogwarts Legacy 2. But um, definitely let me know what you guys think. Let me know where, uh, where you guys stand on this update. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, do you agree that the Onyx Hypocrite shouldn't have been in, just like I agree? that it should not have been in this update um and let me know what else you guys have done like anything unique with photo mode anything like that <sighs> what else you want to see so that'll end the hogwarts legacy june 2024 update summer update um and let's get into something real quick um like i said a nice segue from going from you know they took out quidditch and hogwarts legacy turns out harry potter is getting a quidditch game it is not by, I think this, I think it's also by Wizarding World, but it's not by the same creators of Hogwarts Legacy. I, I don't know who it is exactly, but all I know is that there's a game coming out called Harry Potter Quidditch Champions. It's supposed to launch on September 3rd, 2024, and I don't think you can pre-order this game. There's not really too much to know about this game. They came out with the trailer. Go check out the trailer online. I think it's by, um... WB or like Wizarding World or something like that. So go check it out. And uh, there's a lot of characters returning to this game for the Harry Potter franchise. It does. It's a very you know fictional game that's going to focus on um, multiplayer aspects. There is a single player, which I'm sure you could probably play against like AI and computer. There's a co-op mode where you could probably play with your friends against like computers stuff like that and there's also pvp where you could probably play with your friends or against your friends or against just other random people online um the game is very cartoonish it doesn't really look too realistic like it won't have the same graphics as hogwarts legacy um so it looks very cartoonish like i said it's almost like kind of like a fortnite kind of deal like you know you go from like warzone to fortnite like totally different dynamic warzone is very supposed to be like realistic and have like kind of like realistic touch to it whereas fortnite's supposed to be more cartoon and goofy and and just kind of focuses on its gameplays uh, harry potter quidditch champions looks the exact same way it's kind of like got that 
Hogwarts Legacy has like that Warzone type, Call of Duty Warzone type graphics, whereas like um, Harry Potter Quidditch Champions has like that Fortnite type graphics. Cartoon, goofy, not meant to be like super appealing to the eye. And in the trailer, it's basically just a reveal trailer of them playing Quidditch. Uh, I, if it, you know, details are very sparse on this, by the way. There's not too much I can say in like what you'll be able to do. You know, I can't say that you'll be able to be a beater and hit hit bludgers all day or, or catch the snitch. I'm not too, too sure, but if it does follow normal Quidditch rules, then it'll be like your classic 7-on-7. Seven seven. Uh, there's three hoops that you can throw the quaffle through. The quaffle is the main ball, the big ball that they have in Harry Potter. I don't know if there's going to be physicality involved in this game. I'm assuming there is. I don't know. As far as teams, I think there's going to be, like, you can probably play as, like, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. I think I even saw some of the world teams on there, like Bulgaria, and 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 I think I even saw Victor Crumb. I don't know if they're going to have the professional leagues where, like, you know, the, the Harpies play or something like that. But if it follows, I guess, normal Quidditch rules, you know, 7-on-7, seven seven, throw the Quaffle through the through the goalpost, uh, careful with beaters, as well as catch the snitch the game ends. Remember, just because you catch the snitch doesn't mean that you win. It just means you're guaranteed 150 extra points, and the game is over. So if your team is losing like 400 to uh, 200, and the team with 200 catches the snitch, they're not going to win. They'll just be at 350, and it'll be a lot closer. But all the snitch does is it gives you 150 and it ends the game. So, like I said, you can't pre-order the game. I did see some things, though, that um, will be included. I, I saw that. Uh, I don't know the exact list about it, but I think I saw, like, you could even obtain a Sebastian Salo skin. And if those of you that have played Hogwarts Legacy know, Sebastian Salo is, like, your technically, like, best friend at Hogwarts at the moment. And so I'm assuming characters from Hogwarts Legacy are going to transfer over to um, Quidditch Champions. It looks like a pretty neat game. Um, I'd rather get a Quidditch mode in Hogwarts Legacy. This kind of just looks like a time killer, honestly. It kind of just looks like a time killer. doesn't look like anything too, too special. Um, it kind of just looks like maybe you'll be able to play here and there. Maybe you'll have like 40 minutes to an hour to just spare. So you hop on Quidditch Champions and see what you can do there. Like I said, it doesn't look like anything special. You know, when Hogwarts Legacy trailers came out, everybody knew that it was going to be a, a big game and hopefully like a, a AAA game type deal. Uh, this doesn't look like it. This just looks like it's going to be a time killer with kind of like Fortnite graphic-esque ability. Kind of like Knockout Champions. I don't know if you ever played Knockout Champions. Uh, the dodgeball game or uh, knockout city I think that's what it's called it kind of feels like the same way cartoonish feel quick time killer you probably get a lot of games in so if you're into quidditch and you want to start playing something about that definitely check that out September 3rd I believe it drops um, and that's all that's all we really know about it September 3rd no pre-order I think there's similar characters in the game I'm sure you could probably get rooms this is probably gonna be like many different arenas from like the world cup arena that they have in the movie to like you know the the pitch at hogwarts to like whatever who knows it will release on playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox one xbox series s and x nintendo switch and i'm sure pc as well i think pc steam and epic game store so go ahead and check that out let me know what you guys think about it uh let me know what you guys you know think how it looks and how it how you think it's gonna feel um hopefully it's kind of like a nice little competitive thing that isn't too crazy knockout city got like real crazy honestly hopefully this isn't like too too same but uh let me know what you guys think do you guys think you'd rather see quidditch in hogwarts legacy or do you think you would you think this is a good fit and it's a nice little side piece harry potter game that you can kind of just go to and and play and kill some time maybe Hogwarts Legacy could just focus on campaign, not so much Quidditch. And also, let me know what you think about the new Haunted Hogsmeade Summer June 2024 update. 
uh, anything that I missed or anything that you want to debate on or how, what you think about the update. So let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you guys for uh, another episode of Stay Frosty Gaming Mini Pod. I'll see you guys in the next episode, which I have no idea what we're going to talk about. But we'll see. Maybe I'll talk about Star Wars Outlaws. And um, let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys, stay frosty.